Racing. Light Manelli came out on roller skates and leads Taco Time. Simplicity. Oh yeah, all right. Kiss Me Kiara. Super Pumped. Indigo Ruby. And back at the tail, Stylish in Black. But the track record holder broke away. It's Light Manelli clear of Taco Time and Light Manelli by four. And that was Light Manelli at Mandra last Thursday night setting a new 300 metre track record of 16.75 in a heat of the Dash Light Manelli, of course, broke her own track record. She's now reeled off four wins in a row. Can she make it five in tomorrow night's final? Hello and welcome to the Wednesday Preview. James Broadhurst with you and joining me, as he always does, the regal race caller himself, the monarch of the Mike Hayden. King Hayden, good to have you on the show. Good to be here, James. You've scrubbed up nicely. That must have been for the awards on Sunday. Uh, it wasn't, but yes, okay. I was clean shaven for Greyhound of the Year. Um, not that it was about me, Hayden, it was about, congratulations, uh, we should mention, to Elite Machine taking out the, our highest honour, Greyhound of the Year, on a Sunday night. Hey, what about what we've got ahead of us, Hayden? Heat, sorry, final of the dash on Thursday night down there at Mandra, and then on the weekend we've got heats of the Puppy Classic. Yeah, really looking forward to the dash. Lots of speed engaged in that, as you'd anticipate. And then some of our young stars in predominantly hobby-dominated heats of the puppy classic. But we get to see a diversity, certainly, between our fastest dogs over the short course and then some of our rising stars. So it's a good weekend for greyhound racing. Yeah, certainly is. Why don't we kick off with that dash final down there, Mandra, tomorrow night. Really intriguing field i thought for this one a lot of good racing that those heats were a lot of fun weren't they now we saw light manelli at the top of the show she's gets box two here for the trophy decider out in box eight we've got black salmon a greyhound that has been superb over the 400 meter trip translated that to the 300 last week has uh, how's black salmon going to go from box eight i guess that's the question here rex Hunter, another dog in good form, tricky draw, but I think can be a uh, can play a role in this event. Taco time out of box one here has been beaten by Light Manelli in her past three, but can launch, and with that draw might be able to play a role in this one. And Renegade Cochise out of box four here probably won't jump but certainly will muster. In fact, why don't we go back and have a look at his heat run and in what was his first attempt over the 300. Renegade Cochise is beaten out from the pink, but he quickly clicks up into top gear and he pushes up to tackle the leading all over Karja as those two separate from the rest over the field. All over Karja holds for a moment, but Renegade Cochise is too strong. He powers past and storms home to grab the victory in 16.89. Good win from him. He's another dog in good form here. A lot of dogs coming into this th uh, with good records, Hayden. Uh, who do you like in this one? I've narrowed it down to three. Okay. Light Manelli is the dog in form, has the runs on the board, hard to beat. Renegade Cachise, I think, is the fastest dog in the race. Can he do enough to balance up in a position which will provide him enough room to win? That's the question from box four. And Black Salmon descending from out wide. I like the fact this dog has drawn box number eight because it gives him that opportunity to build up that head of steam. And he's another dog that can muster so fast, like Renegade Cachise. I love the way that Ryan Levitsky described that Renegade Cachise race last start post race he said he made all over Karja look like a Jack Russell and it must be said really <laughs> did and that's he's he made it look ordinary and all over Karja's not ordinary it's a it's a quality dog so gee he's got some pace Renegade Kachis he just needs to jump well because if he's not and oftentimes he isn't quick through those first couple of bounds he will get made to pay here over the 300 because most of these dogs really do their best work through those opening few strides mm. and box number four could be trappy. One of those races at the 300, obviously that start is so crucial. Really a dog with that early speed, if they don't step, their chances are blown, aren't they? So I guess with a dog like Renegade Cochise, you do get a second bite at it. Mm. Potentially. Potentially, yes. Yes. 
but you you can't afford any mistakes in a mm. race like this just because there's so much talent and those dogs in particular I touched on, like Manelli, who's been indestructible recently, overcame adversity to still win a couple of starts ago yeah. when not leading. Right. If leading in this, she could threaten her own track record again and Black well, Salmon. The classic example, she leads, she wins yes. type deal for like Manelli. But her prospects from box two, is Taco time going to be a factor for her? It just depends how long it takes like Manili to get past Taco time, I think, because she needs to be on her game. If they both jump as they did last week, Taco time will be able to hold up for the first 50 and then like Manili's probably just too fast and gets across to clear. So... Yeah, it just depends how fast Light Manelli gets out as to how much work she has to do to get across Taco time, I think. Mm. OK, well, going to be a great race. If you had to narrow it down from your three to one, where would you go? Understandably, and rightly so, I do think Light Manelli will be the favourite. So, yes, if you were playing percentages, that's the way i go. All right, fair enough. Light Manelli, yeah, I think Light Manelli for me as well, five in a row down there uh, tomorrow night, Amanda Butt. Anything can happen, 300 mm. metre racing. Let's swing our attention to these heats of the Puppy Classic at Cangton on Saturday night. And in the first heat, we're seeing Ghost Emoji, a winner of uh, his past three. The last two of those have been at Mandra, but has run good times. And of course, did clock that 2968 at Cangton on December 30. He's got box three in this one. Probably um, the one weakness you've got with this dog is that he's generally not overly quick early. He does take a bit of time to wind up. That hasn't been a problem for him of late, though. Sunset Serengeti, my Wednesday best bet last week. Hey, I've got to crow about it because I finally landed one. <laughs> hey, we actually both got him up. It was a real right. watershed day. <laughs> it really was. Don't expect that to happen again anytime too soon, Funders. Uh, a breakthrough victory last Wednesday. This one does look a bit more difficult, though, it must be said. We've got Sunset Night Jar, a greyhound that is super quick out of the traps should be leading this from the pole but probably not strong enough to hold them out uh, unless there's trouble behind of course and then sunset comanche genuine talent uh not the quickest out but may get time space to work uh, into the race from the pink named four of them all hobby dogs uh is there another dog uh, even one that's not from the hobby camp that uh, can feature here, Hayden, do you think? I think it's likely to be a hobby-dominated finish. Mm. I do think you haven't mentioned Sneaky Emoji. I thought he was nearly as good as Ghost Emoji in that Kenyana Cup. He just got hampered at a couple of stages. And similarly, he does have that running style where he takes a while to get balanced and gets going through his gears throughout the race. It's going to be a tough ask to get across from box number seven. I'm interested to see how this race shapes up because you've got Sunset Nightjar, fastest dog in the race, drawn mm. one. Wise Barrow there. I think Ghost Emoji, providing he doesn't begin that well, he might be able to tuck up behind. And if he's sitting on the back of those two dogs, then he'll go straight past them. So it could set up really well for him. But if he jumps well, then he's got to deal with Sunset Pepe, who's another really quick beginner drawn out in four. So... I think it, a lot depends on the jump for Ghost Emoji, how he's going to fare in the finish. And then you've got I'm a Mustang, who's interesting for Matthew Lanigan, comes over here with a so-so record from Victoria, faces clearly her st uh, toughest test. And then, yeah, you've got Hobby left and right, Sunset Serengeti and Sunset Comanche out in eight. I think it's just going to be very tough for him to overcome that box. I would lean toward Ghost Emoji. If you were getting a price sneaky emoji, I'd be specking there. All right, there we go. Second heat we swing to now, and once again we're seeing David Hobby holding the whip hand here. Hey, thought this one was an interesting one, Hayden. The, the two dogs that I think are the leading lights in this one just have an element of intrigue uh, surrounding them. We've got Sunset Tyson, of course, uh, got beaten last week when probably shouldn't have but but once he missed the jump it was going to be hard for him because he just found all sorts of trouble didn't he uh, more trouble than a footy player on an end of season trip in Bali better than that but he has to be better at box rise question for you which I want you to answer in a moment do you trust him 
in this one. And the other dog uh, that I think is uh, one of the leading contenders here, Cubert Minnelli. Ha haven't seen him since his run in the Birthday Cup final. Prior to that, r was racing a lot at Mandra, racing with a lot of success, it must be said. And he also does boast that uh, 29.42 at Kangton. Off the scene for a month, really talented dog, but a little bit of a wild card in terms of where he's at at the moment. So they're the two that stand out for me, but just a little bit of a query on, on both of them for mine. I think you are right. I do think they are the big two. Sunset Tyson I was dead keen on last week, and unfortunately there was just a lot of pressure into that first turn. I, I thought momentarily he was going to squirm his way right. through, but he just didn't quite. And additionally, I think Sunset Comanche jumped the best I've ever seen him jump, and he was drawn immediately to his outside, which didn't help his cause. If he begins like he did three starts ago on the Claude Powell, he'll lead and win. Even previous to that, he'd been jumping okay, but he just needs that little bit of room early. Is he going to be afforded that? Well, Cubert Minnelli's not a notably quick beginner, but he's been racing over the shorter course. I think it's a similar setup for Cubert Minnelli as we saw for Crumble Minnelli. Right. He's coming to 520. He's not going to be at his best yet over this kind of trip. He'll probably be found a little bit wanting, but can he overcome that first up and we'll see a better article next week certainly so he's one of the best dogs we have here in wa already and he's a contestant at the puppy classic shy emoji continues to race well sunset frazier registered a good time when winning last start got the cash another one for matthew lennigan i think this is the better of his two dogs through the series whether he can measure up against those other two though remains to be seen yeah both favorites will require that bit of luck and uh, whoever gets the most will probably succeed. Okay. If neither of them get luck, is there a third option here for you? There is. I'm not entirely sure, sure. who it's going to be. Good. Probably. Because then it really opens it up, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, Sunset Frazier does have some early speed, and he's drawn outside of those steady beginners, and Shy Emoji's drawn underneath them. So potentially those two who continue to race well. Question without notice for you, Hayden. Puppy Classic, we often see a, a star emerge from this series, a dog that goes on to be a really good dog. Do you think uh, Sunset Tyson, Cubert Minnelli, or, or maybe one from that first heat, uh, do you think one of the, the, those dogs could be that dog that goes on? If there is to be one, I think it would come from the second heat, one of Sunset Tyson and Cubert Minnelli. They've been the most exciting so far. It's just a case of them producing their best and ironing out some of those wrinkles they perhaps have because they're still young dogs learning if they begin to increase their continuity of racing performances and their best consistently mm. the world is their oyster sunset tyson's gone 29 45 and cuba minnelli's gone 26 88 or whatever at uh, yeah, mandra yeah. so and also and 29 40 at uh, kangs as mm. well yeah look exciting greyhounds that's an exciting series and we'll See how that all plays out at Cannington on Saturday. We've also got racing at Cannington tonight. First at 6.41. Free entry, as it is each and every night here at Greyhounds WA. Hayden, where's your money going tonight? It's going early, mm. like race number two lately. Mm. Race two, number eight, all about Garnet. First up since August of last year. Don't think the dog appreciated being held up inside of Greyhounds when last seen in those most recent couple of efforts. Tonight, perfectly drawn out in box number eight. This litter seems to have really gone on in that time, so hopefully that's the similar theme for All About Garnet. And in a steady lineup, I think All About Garnet might be able to get a breakthrough win in Maiden Company. Race two, number eight. All right, I'm heading towards race six, number one, West on Fever. The Greyhound raises the bat, Hayden, 100 starts. What a... Fantastic performer. He's been over the journey. Uh, been in good form of late as well. Wound the clock back a bit. And from the pole, every chance to continue on, I think will be winning again tonight at Cannington West on Fever in his 100th start. What a fantastic effort by Chris House and the team to keep that dog going. Yeah, well, he wins over a quarter of the time right. as it stands, providing tonight's another success he certainly will elevate that further and a dog that's been a real journeyman and if he begins like he did two starts ago gee he'll be winning yeah really like him from the pole here tonight at Cannington. hey that is pretty much it hayden we've covered a lot as we always do hope 
to see you all down at the track but if you can't make it of course you will be able to catch up with us again next week